Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and a couple of weeks back, Epic Games released the Unreal Engine 5.3 development roadmap. Well, the cool thing here is, as of today, if you go to the Epic Games launcher, you will find Unreal Engine 5.3 Preview is available. If you want to install it, basically just click on up here, it will add a new version, drop down here, find the 5.3 version. It's not showing up in my list, obviously, because I already have it installed. So if you want to go ahead and check out Unreal Engine 5.3 Preview, again, preview. So this means uh, um, there be dragons. Do not use this in production by any means. But let's jump in and take a look at it. And here we are. So Unreal Engine 5.3. You can see it right here. Uh, this is actually a demo level uh, I already had opened up from showcasing earlier on. There is a humble bundle going on for a few more days for uh, Unreal Engine developers. Uh, I forget exactly what it's called, but this is one of the assets in it. It is the uh, Unreal Engine Pirate Island. But we're more concerned. I just wanted some eye candy in the background. I think it looks really good, to be honest. So if you're looking at uh, picking up an asset, check the link out down below. There is a bundle for a few more days at least. But what we are more concerned is this incredibly out of place cyborg mannequin because I'm going to showcase one of the new features of Unreal Engine 5.3. So let's go ahead. Uh, we will select the mannequin right here and we will go into edit mode. Now what you will see once you have enabled this, I'll show you how to do that in just a second, is you now have skeletal editing tools. This is one of those things with Unreal Engine. They're adding more and more content creation and modification tools with every single release. So you can actually create skeletons uh, and do your... Uh, um, your weight painting, etc., all directly inside of Unreal Engine right now. So you'll here, we'll go to the skeleton mode here, and you can see you can edit your skeleton. And here is our existing skeleton for this guy. I could go over here into edit mode. We could grab individual bones, for example. Like here, I can rotate it, or I can, you know, traditional movement, I can move the bone around. So we can change out the bones right there. We can also go into the edit mode over here, uh, and you've got the ability to actually create new bones as well. So in editing mode, you see you've got a couple new options. You can do uh, mirroring, orientation, etc. So if you need to make edits to your skeleton, you can now do them directly in Unreal Engine. On top of that, we've got other tools as well here. For example, uh, skin weight painting. This takes a little bit of time to actually um, warm up, so we'll give it a second. Uh, so I'm going to, I think I need to cancel my existing tools. So here, uh, weight painting, edit weights, and then you can actually paint. So here's the bone we've got affected. We can actually go ahead and paint how the weights will work, how that bone's influence will be. So you can actually do uh, your skeletal mesh weight painting and bone creation and modification directly inside of Unreal Engine 5.3 now. Now, this is an experimental feature that has a couple of meanings behind it. First off, again, there be dragons. Do not consider using this in production. And second is it not necessarily going to make it into the final release. Experimental stuff is considered, again, experimental. If it doesn't work out, then it won't necessarily add it. But it is available as a plugin. Come in here, go to Skeleton for example, and it's this guy right here, Skeletal Mesh Editing Tools. Um, and then on top of that, you've got all your editing, I think they call it Edit Mesh Tools now, uh, Mesh Tools Editor Mode. There are some really, really strong modeling tools that are built into uh, Unreal Engine 5.3 right now. So that's the thing I wanted to showcase in this release. It looks good on camera at the very least, and it's really cool new functionality. So you've got the ability to do a lot of your animation work directly inside of uh, Unreal Engine. This should actually create and save you some you know round trips back to your DCC tool of choice. Uh, so let's go check out the uh, announcement and then a little bit of the roadmap. So here we are in the announcement. There was a couple of other things that were announced in this that I really wanted to demonstrate to you, but I have no clue how they worked because, uh, frankly, there's not a lot of documentation yet. So you're going to be on your own with some of this stuff, just an advance warning there. But Unreal Engine 5.3 Preview is now available. Uh, so it continues to refine the workflow's capabilities of its core features, such as Lumen, uh, which is the uh, real-time uh, lighting system, Nanite, which is the... Uh, super powered level of detail system, uh, path tracing and beyond with this release. Uh, rendering features provide more control over performance and yield better looking results. Uh, users will see reductions in build time with multi-process cook, which is I think probably one of the biggest complaints when it comes to Unreal Engine is the build time. So I don't think people are going to complain too much there. And improving the ability to iterate more quickly on projects. There's also a number of new experimental features. Volumetric renderings can now create volumetrics such as smoke and fire directly inside of Unreal. Again, Again, another theme there. Previously, you would have to create them using an, an external tool and import them in. Now you can actually create volumetrics directly inside of Unreal Engine. I was going to demonstrate it. Haven't got a clue how to do it. Uh, so there's no documentation that I could find as of yet. So that's unfortunate. But we did see the skeletal editor. So alongside the skeletal editor for in uh, engine weight and skinning work, uh, Unreal Engine 5.3 also introduces full support for orthographic renderings, useful for uh, architecture and manufacturing visualization. It's basically, that's like a straight on side shot. Again, normally used for, like they were saying, engineering type drawing, that kind of stuff. Uh, and stylistic games projects. Uh, improved cloth tools with the uh, panel cloth editor and 
and ML cloth. And then we're going to jump over and take a look at the roadmap for uh, other things. There's also a list of the unresolved issues and so on. Um, so the roadmap, again, this was released a few months back. The roadmaps are always a little tricky to follow because some of the stuff has already been announced. So it's hard to explain exactly what's new in 5.3 and what is not. So I'm actually going to link this down below so you can learn more about it on your own. But they break it down by the categories of all the various different pieces that are interesting or that are added in this particular release. One of the things that's actually really quite interesting is the support for sparse volume textures. This is a um, kind of a compressed form. You can basically bring in a VDB file and it will automatically create a sparse volume texture texture for you. How you use the sparse volume texture? I don't know. Couldn't find any documentation, so I cannot demonstrate it to you. But you can now drop in a VDB file uh, and use it to create these um, sparse volume textures. So if you're doing uh, particle effects and you're using like a fluid simulation program or such, or you can bring in the VDB files. There's a bunch of free VDB files you can find on the web as well, if you want to go ahead there. Nanite obviously gets its ongoing improvements, including the experimental release of Nanite spline meshes. Um, and we got Lumen, of course, getting a variety of improvements as well. Uh, path tracing can, oops, that's not path tracing. That's path tracing. Path tracing continues to evolve. Uh, so experimentally now has initial support for tracing heterogeneous volumes such as smoke, fire, and clouds. So again, that volumetrics part is kind of intermingled across all the various different systems of Unreal Engine 5.3. Improvements to the hair system, the substrate system, which is kind of like a new uh, PBR on steroids uh, texturing system, uh, continues to get... Uh, improvements is still actually considered experimental. So there is a possibility that it could not actually make it to live, but I think that's very, very unlikely. Uh, but it, again, not production ready for sure, but they've got new glints, specular profiles, uh, improvements across the board, new fuzz model for high spec platforms and so on. Uh, we saw that one in their demo where they showed off the Rivian driving around the, the paint you know, it's got gloss and fleck and a lot of things you couldn't traditionally do with a PBR type workflow. That's where Substrate is going to come in as well. Uh, again, improvements to the hair, improvements to temporal uh, super resolution support. World building tools got improvements as well. Uh, we got procedural content generation improvements. That was the big thing in the 5.2 release. And of course, we're going to get new improvements there, including hierarchical generation, custom procedural elements, rule processing from external data, and so on. So procedural content generation, of course, continues to improve. Uh, C20 is now the default version. Um, again, that multi-process cooking should speed up build times, helps reduce the total times it takes to get cooked output from a build farm or on your local workstation by leveraging available CPU cores and memory resources. Uh, so that is considered beta in this particular release. Uh, platform improvements as well. This one was announced in 5.2, but continues to go on. We're getting support for Nanite on Apple devices. Unfortunately, it's M2 only. Apparently, they added some functionality in the M2 that wasn't in the M1 that enables Nanite functionality. But it's possible we could see an M1 port at some point in the future, but it's seeming less and less likely. Uh, again, we got the new experimental skeletal editor we showed you really quickly in action earlier on. Improvements to the machine learning deformer stuff, animation improvements as well. Things about virtual production, not really something I covered that much on the channel. Simulation improvements as well, including the chaos uh, cloth physics stuff there as well. Again, that is uh, early on and experimental. Uh, improvements again to audio, including uh, MetaSound output watching and so on. So uh, MetaSounds was their new audio system, I think in Unreal Engine 5.0. Uh, so it continues to grow and get new features and functionality. Interestingly enough, we got it in the modeling tools. They continue to advance. So like I said, there's more and more content creation tools coming inside of Unreal Engine. So you've got... Um, those are all beta levels. So UV tools, modeling tools, and the workflow in general have all improved with this release. And yeah, that's kind of the nutshell of it. That's the roadmap. I will have the link down below. Some of the stuff, again, is carrying over from the 5.2 releases and earlier. So a lot of things that were previously experimental might be now considered beta or just have more refined features, etc. But definitely some nice improvements in Unreal Engine 5.3. And I think a lot of people will definitely applaud improved build times. So let me know what you think of Unreal Engine 5.3, the Unreal Engine development roadmap and the new features and functionality in the comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.